John, I want to start by playing some more of the strong statements that we heard from the president yesterday. John, I'm sorry, we're going to get that queued up for you for a second. But he said that, that there, there's no way to describe the evil. He said that we stand with Israel. And today, Benjamin Netanyahu has done something that was previously unthinkable. He's reached out to Benny Gantz, the former defense minister, a former opponent, to form a wartime coalition government. Will this help add needed expertise to the Israeli military? Well, I mean, obviously, uh, Mr. Gantz has a long history in the uh, in the Israeli Defense Forces and in in, in government uh, as a civilian leader. Uh, I think I'll let Prime Minister Netanyahu speak to his plans for uh, unity government. That's really uh, an internal issue for them. Uh, what we want to make sure that they know uh, is that the United States support for Israel will will be sustained, uh, will be maintained, will be strong going forward. You just heard the president talk about that just a couple of minutes ago in the Rose Garden. Uh, uh, whatever government forms in Israel, we want that government and the leaders in that government to know that the United States will be with them. We've also been reporting that the president did in their conversations, he's had many conversations now with the prime minister, urge just to be aware of the risks involved in Excessive civilian deaths in Gaza. You've got such a dense, densely populated, very small area. Um, yeah. What are your concerns about that? Well, nobody wants to see any more innocent life taken, Andrea. It's it's already been deadly enough. I mean, it's just incredible the the scope of the butchery there. So nobody wants to see any more innocent lives uh, lost or, or hurt or families uh, grieving and, and suffering. And, and Hamas does not speak for the Palestinian people. In fact, they're putting the Palestinian people in Gaza at greater risk by setting up their command centers uh, in hospitals and schools. So look, you heard the president talk about this yesterday. One of the great things about this relationship with Israel is we have a lot of shared interests, a respect for life, respect for the rule of law, and particularly the law of war. Um, and, and we know we can rely on that respect going forward. On the charters, Elizabeth Sherwood Randall mentioned that there was a plan afoot to, to get commercial charters, to have commercial airlines add some flights for Americans in Israel, American citizens, maybe students and others. There's so many there who may want to leave now, given that the war could spread. Uh, what, how, what is the progress on that? Well, I, I don't want to get ahead of where we are in the decision-making process, Andrea, but uh, we are obviously, as you would expect we would, um, in touch with American citizens that are there in Israel, making sure we have a sense of how many might want to go and, and how they might, when, when they might want to go, and looking at and examining a range of options to help facilitate that travel out of Israel. Um, there are some commercial carriers that are still flying out of the airport in Ben-Gurion. There are some viable land routes that are available, but, but we understand that that may not suit everybody. So, uh, we're, we're working on this very hard, uh, and, uh, and I think we'll have more to say about that uh, in coming days. Would this be American citizens and those with dual citizenship? Well, a dual, a dual, a dual national uh, is, is an, an American, American in our book. That's an Amer it's an American in our book, so we don't make that distinction. What are your concerns, again, about the casualties in Gaza? Because, obviously, there are a lot of innocent Palestinians not connected to the, the Hamas regime who have, in fact, um, have been exploited in the past and on a daily basis by the Hamas government. That's right. Look, I mean, I think that's a really strong point, and, and uh, probably I didn't make it well enough in my last answer, but uh, Hamas doesn't represent the aspirations of the Palestinian people. Hamas is deliberately placing them at greater risk by uh, sheltering themselves in, again, hospitals and residences and, and, and schools. Um, and again, we call on Hamas, obviously, to stop this violence, release all the hostages, um, and, and immediately uh, stop these attacks. Uh, but you're right. They, they, um, they are placing the Palestinian people at greater risk. Are you hoping that some of the governments like Egypt and Qatar, who have relationships with Hamas, can influence Hamas to release the hostages, Israelis and Americans? We obviously call on the immediate release. Uh, uh, short of that happening, um, what I can tell you is that uh, we're going to stay in touch with the families. And the families have been an incredible source of information for us in terms of 
t telling us what they know about uh, when their loved ones might have been abducted and taken away and where and that kind of thing. So it's been a terrific line of communication there. We're going to keep that open. We're obviously going to keep the lines open with Israeli officials. We have offered expertise hostage recovery expertise coming from federal law enforcement, the U.S. military, the intel community. Uh, of course, the Israelis already have a pretty sophisticated hostage recovery uh, capability, but we're going to stay lashed up with them. There's no greater priority for President Biden than the safety and security of American citizens overseas, particularly those who have been detained or held hostage. Uh, we're going to do everything we can, everything possible, to get them back with their families where they belong. Can you clarify, when the president talked about a host hostage uh, special operations unit or rescue teams, is this sending in more expertise or are we talking about the people who are already in the embassy on a regular basis? It's the latter, Andrea. There's a small cell, a liaison cell of, of U.S. special operations uh, troops that are uh, perpetually in Israel, particularly in this case, we're there for uh, some exercises that we were planning to do. Uh, they are still there. They do have some of that expertise that I talked about, that military expertise, and they are available, as the Secretary of Defense said, available uh, to provide that sort of support uh, should the Israelis want to avail themselves of it. Let me ask you about Iran, because we've been reporting that there is no credible evidence, as you have said, as other officials in government have said, no credible evidence that Iran specifically you know, planned and ordered this strike. That doesn't mean that Iran hasn't been arming, training, you know, Hamas for decades. And yeah. as we've reported, you know, there would be no Hamas without Iran. Uh, that said, is there anything new on that front? Is Tehran sending you any signals, specifically through third parties or otherwise, that they were not involved in this? No, Andrea, there's no updates uh, to that situation. I think, um, obviously, as we've been saying for the last couple of days, we're going to keep picking apart at, at the intelligence that's out there. We're going to keep looking, sifting through the streams uh, that we know we have available to us. But as you and I are speaking today, we haven't seen anything that's, that cites specific support to this specific set of attacks. But you're right. Look, there's a, a degree of complicity here. We're not walking away from that. Iran has supported Hamas for so many years, resourcing, training, funding, capabilities. Uh, I mean, it's all there. And you're right. Hamas wouldn't be uh, without the support that they get uh, from Iran writ large. But we just haven't found anything that, that tells us that the Iranians e knew of this specific planning, were involved in this planning, resourced it or helped in, in any tangible way. The Ayatollah Khomeini, the supreme leader in Iran, said yesterday that uh, those who say that they were involved are wrong. But then he went on to say, I kiss the hands, uh, you know, of those who pulled this uh, who, ordered the strike. I don't have the exact quote in front of me, but he praised the strike. Yeah, look, that's obviously reprehensible and repugnant, uh, but it is to be expected uh, coming from the Supreme Leader. I mean, given their support for terrorist networks in the region, including Hezbollah. Uh, so, I mean, the, the, it's not like we were shocked to hear the Supreme Leader come out and say that. It's just another example uh, of the, 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 the malintent of Iran in the region and the degree to which uh, they're willing to go to spread violence and terrorism and fear and destabilize the region. All the more reason why it's important for us to continue our efforts in the Middle East. Obviously, today we're focused squarely on supporting Israel uh, from a military perspective in terms of uh, the kinds of support they need. But obviously, we haven't forgotten how important it is to move, continue to move towards normalization between Israel and Saudi Arabia, to continue to make sure that our military presence in the Gulf and in the region is sufficient to the threat that Iran poses, to continue to hold Iran accountable economically for their support to Russia uh, in Ukraine, certainly their support to terrorist networks, certainly their efforts to interrupt and interdict maritime shipping in the Gulf. We've added ships to the to the Gulf region now. Um, so we are absolutely this all that those comments are just all the more proof and underscore how important it is for us to continue to hold Iran accountable and to keep pressure on them. And now the IDF is now issuing a report of a fear of intrusion from the north, uh, obviously from Lebanon, from Hezbollah, presumably, and they're warning all Israelis in the north to shelter in place, to be careful, yeah. uh, to protect themselves. What do we know about that? 
Yeah, I've just seen those reports, too, uh, almost at probably the same time you did. Uh, so I obviously can't independently verify that they're accurate. I have no reason to dispute them at all. We have seen rocket fire coming from southern Lebanon by, by Hezbollah into northern Israel. Uh, we obviously are watching this with great concern. Uh, we, we don't want to see this conflict widen or expand. We certainly don't believe it's in the IDF's interest for there to be a second front now that they're going to have to fight and defend against uh, as they're trying to uh, prosecute uh, a conflict against or prosecute operations against uh, Hamas. So we're watching this real closely, but it is worrisome. So just yesterday, Admiral Stavridis, of course, you know, Admiral Stavridis, the former uh, Supreme Allied Commander, said if Hezbollah fires missiles from the north and opens a second front, that, quote, the jets will whistle off the deck of the USS Gerald Ford, obviously putting us in the middle of the action. What's your I reaction? Won't speak I won't speak for uh, potential military operations, future military operations, one way or the other. I don't think that would be wise to do. Uh, but we moved that carrier strike group to the Eastern Med primarily as a deterrent to make to send a strong signal that we don't want to see. And you heard the president say this yesterday: don't want to see any actor, any group, any organization, any nation state try to take advantage of the situation in Israel uh, and try to perpetuate their hostility on Israel by opening up or widening this conflict. We don't want to see that happen. Uh, we put that uh, strike group there for a deterrent purpose, and I think I probably ought to just leave it right there. And finally, uh, the Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu has said that this is a time to decapitate Hamas, uh, to remove Hamas, and he's joined by Sibi Livni and other members of the opposition, previous opposition, united behind saying enough is enough, that they, we cannot go through this every few years, and nothing like this has ever happened from Hamas before. Um, Tom Friedman, though, was warning today, are they thinking through, are we thinking through what happens the day after the day after? In other words, we don't want to repeat the mistakes made in Iraq, where we remove the Ba'ath army, and then what followed was... 10 years of civil war. Yeah, look, we all, we all in the national security world, we all have to be thinking about the day after the day after. Of course, every decision you make uh, uh, has repercussions. Every decision you don't make, inaction, has consequences and repercussions you have to think about. But I don't think that Israeli people can be blamed, or, and I certainly think they can be forgiven for wanting to decapitate Hamas. I mean, it was a, think about how we felt about al-Qaeda after 9-11. Uh, and just ratio-wise, uh, I mean, this is just as significant to the Israeli people as, as our 9-11. We wanted to decapitate al-Qaeda. We took us a while, but we got bin Laden. Uh, you can't very well blame the Israeli people for wanting to make sure that they don't have to face this kind of a threat from that particular terrorist group uh, anytime in the future.